Welcome to the Grace United Church worship service. Today we are in Bracebridge near the falls and we welcome you wherever you are. I'm joined today by Sandra Rattan, our music director, also by a number of vocalists who are with us, as well as Paul Burke on guitar and our youth ministries coordinator, Jeffrey Dale. You'll be hearing from and about Jeffrey Dale a little bit later in our worship service. Also, I want to say a thanks to those who provided pictures for us last week. We used many of them. And thanks to Stan Corkum and Mary Ann Gentleman for some pictures that we have for today. And so we begin. Come together, everyone, and bring your stories. Sing your songs and share in the spirit. Come to the warmth of fellowship, to the center of friendship together, to the one who calls us to be family. Let even the silence speak with a thousand voices in tribute to our living, loving God in celebration of our lives and the priceless gift of life that God gives to us. May we see the light, share the light, and be the light in God's world. I want to acknowledge the traditional territory on which we are worshiping today of the Ashninabak and the Wata First Nation, as well as the historic Métis communities of our region. We acknowledge that the Simcoe Muskoka is the home of many First Nation Inuit and Métis communities across Turtle Island. In this time of truth and reconciliation, we come together in new understandings and welcome an opportunity to work together. May we be guided in the work that we do. Let us pray. God, creator of the land and sky, we delight in your summers, your warming sun and balmy night air, the first flowers of summer and the fresh corn. We take pleasure in your summertime earth. We confess that we do not always do our part to preserve this holy creation. We confess that it is easier not to take responsibility for the damage that we do to the earth. Merciful God, we delight in your summertime abundance. May we blossom as stewards of your creation. May we live reverently and respectfully. May we see you in the faces of those we meet and in the miracle of this place and this world. Amen. Let us join together now in our opening hymn, My Love Colors Outside the Lines, Please join in as we sing together. My love colors outside the lines Exploring paths that feel good Outside the lines, turns moons to blessings, water into wine, and takes me into places where I've never been before, and opens doors to worlds outside the lines. We'll never walk. Prepared to drown, body and soul, leave us soaking from time to time. And we'll never move the gravestones if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul longs to color outside the lines. Sun come in the shine. I want to walk 
beyond the boundaries where I've never been before to open doors to worlds outside the line. We'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown body and soul in a soaking Stones, if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul longs to color outside the lines. Tear back the curtain, sun come in and shine. I want to walk beyond boundaries where I've never been before to open doors to worlds outside the line. Amy was really excited. Well, maybe we should say Amy was excited again, because Amy loved to go camping. And this year, she wasn't sure it was gonna be possible, but she loved camping. Her teacher and her parents would tell you that she loved everything. They said she was very enthusiastic. All winter, ta Amy talked about going camping. She'd gone for three years in a row, and she told everyone she wanted to go for the rest of her life even if she had to be a leader. Her friends loved to go. They loved to go with Amy because Amy was so much fun. And Amy liked everything about camping. The games and the sports, but oh, she liked winning too. And she often did win. Well, it was finally decided that there could be camping this year, even if it couldn't be overnight camp, it could be day camp. So Amy was so excited that she made mom get up early every single morning just so she could be the first one at the day camp. And they drove out in the country to where the camp was and then she'd get there and greet everybody as they arrived. Well, on this particular day when Amy got there, she got told there was gonna be a scavenger hunt. I love scavenger hunts, said Amy. Well, she got her list and then they got down on the beach and the leaders told them they had to get in canoes and they were gonna paddle them across a little stretch of water to the woods. And when they got to the woods, they could go and get the things on their list. Amy was so excited, she helped paddle the canoe. And when she jumped out on the other side, the first to arrive, of course, she started collecting her items. A pine cone and an acorn with a lid on top and a wildflower, even though she didn't know what kind it was, and a blueberry leaf. And then she saw green moss. Where was she gonna find green moss? Well, she remembered that there was a little brook in the woods. Maybe there'd be green moss there. So off she went further into the woods and she came out into a clearing and there was a little pond there. It had steep sides down and the water was so clear and the sun was shining above through the trees. What a beautiful spot, Amy thought. Wow, but no moss. Well, she thought, you know, sometime when I have time, I'm going to come back here again and see this place. As she turned to leave, she thought she saw something in the pond. She turned back and she looked and it looked like a little animal swimming around and it looked exhausted. Why, well, it looked like a little chipmunk. Well, Amy leaned over and looked and she thought, why is it just swimming around like that? Then she realized it was too steep of, on the sides for the little animal to get out. Oh, she thought, the poor thing, it's going to drown. I wish I could stay and help it, but I got a race. She turned around and she ran a few meters and she stopped and she thought, you know, if there was a long branch, a long branch with leaves on it, I'll bet that little animal could get out. But she thought, I don't have time to do that. And off she started again. Then all of a sudden, Amy stopped and she thought, I can't let that little animal drive drown even if I'm gonna even if I'm gonna lose the race 
she went back. She went back and she found a long branch with leaves on it and she wedged it down over the pond. And then she waited and she watched. And after a little while, the animal swam over near the, the branch and when it saw the branch, it clambered up the branch and right out onto the bank. And then it just lay on the bank exhausted. Amy didn't stay to watch anymore. She knew it was safe. She started back through the woods, but she knew she'd lost the race now. She looked around and for the first time she started to see the woods and the flowers and the, and the trees and the sun. And when she got back to the beach, everybody was there. And some of them were laughing because she was so late. And her counselor came rushing over and she said, Amy, Amy, you are so late. We were worried about you because we know you like to be the first. You like to win. Amy smiled at her counselor. And then she said, well, you know, winning isn't everything. Some things are more important. Her counselor looked at her and she smiled and she said, you are so right, Amy. She put her arm around her and together they walked back to the canoe. Today's reading comes to us from the book of Matthew. It is adapted and translated by Ralph Milton, and it is titled Stories of God's Shalom, based on Matthew 13, 31 through 33, and 44 through 45. Shalom is a Hebrew word. It means something like peace, but it means much more than that. Jesus told many parables to help us understand Shalom. Maybe he was laughing a little when he told this one. God's shalom is like a mustard seed, Jesus said as he held the tiny seed in his hand. See how tiny it is. You think a mustard seed can only grow into a small plant? Well, pretend that it can grow into a big tree. Pretend that birds will come and make nests in the branches. Everyone laughed. A mustard plant is as big as a tree. Yes, Jesus laughed too. God's shalom is like that. Then Jesus told an even funnier story. You know the yeast that people use to make bread? You can't see how the yeast works. It just bubbles around inside the bread. Well, suppose a woman took a tiny bit of yeast Suppose she mixed it with a lot of flour and water. The yeast would work inside the dough. And after a while, she would have enough bread to feed a hundred people. You mean one tiny bit of yeast could make all that flour into bread, someone asked? That's right, said Jesus, smiling. God's shalom is like that. You can't see it working. But it's there all the time, working in you and in me. Here is another way to think about God's shalom, said Jesus. God's shalom is like a treasure hidden in a field. If you knew about that treasure, you would go and sell all the things you had. Then you would take the money and buy the whole field. You would want the treasures to be yours. Should we want God's shalom that much? The people asked. Yes, said Jesus, that much. So
summertime and the living is easy so the musical porgy and bass goes look around the lush landscapes the invitation of nature the sense of all creation breathing breathing perhaps better than it's been breathing for some time but easy living maybe not so much and the musical porgy and bass doesn't really describe easy living either Maybe more of a hope and a dream than a reality. There's still disease and death, heartache and loneliness, despair and persecution. With COVID-19 on the rise again and no end in sight, it could really get us down. And yet, quietly, beneath the soil, there is new life. Hidden in a lump of dough, there is vitality. Buried in a field is a treasure. Matthew gives us short parables today, stories Jesus told of the kingdom of God, of God's shalom, as the story Bible describes it. For three Sundays, we have had stories of soil, the sower determined to plant everywhere, cultivating even weeds to keep plants alive. And now to get today, we get parables that I really love. A seed hidden in the soil that grows into a majestic plant. And other hidden things that come to light and bring us surprise and joy. I think we need just now the affirmation that there are things beyond our sight and knowledge that can and will give us new sight and new knowledge and joy. If there is any one thing I think that Jesus was offering with his parables, it was this. God's kingdom, God's shalom, is a gift of such magnitude that it will fill you with joy. We don't create it, we discover it. We don't seek it, we stumble upon it. We don't deserve it, we are gifted with it. What really matters is that it's there for us. How then will we respond? Will we rejoice? Will we let it become the focus of our lives? Will we share that joy with others? I think sometimes there is just too little rejoicing in our world. And no, I am not a Pollyanna who thinks everything is roses. But I do believe that God's shalom for us is within and around us and it is in the uncovering, undiscovering of it that we find joy in our living. What is Jesus telling us with these parables? Perhaps this. The world is not a linear extension of what we know and fear, but the unknown germination of a love that is vibrant, enduring, and life-giving. Jesus spent a lot of time outdoors and with people. He used simple stories of everyday life to speak great truths about life and about the God that he so wanted us to acknowledge. So take a moment today and think about whether there are places where you have discovered joy and unexpected life. If Jesus is to be our guide in this, then explore the discoveries that have happened in some part of your life. 
Perhaps on the surface, they don't seem remarkable, even humdrum and normal, not sought after, but even stumbled upon. And let us learn from them about the joy of living. Not so, you might say. There's nothing remarkable that I have discovered or encountered in my life. Give it time. Give it time. Let the yeast leaven and ferment. Let the seed germinate. Let your heart and mind be open. And yes, perhaps dig a little to see where the hidden treasure might be in your own life. In his book, Surprised by Joy, C.S. Lewis wrote that joy is like a signpost to those lost in the woods, pointing the way. Its appearance, though, he said, is not so important when we found our way out to the pathway and there's lots of other signposts. It's when we're lost that that signpost is so important. So think about places where you are lost and needing a signpost. If you're not lost, if you're not in need of any joy, this sermon is not for you. But I dare say we all have places in our hearts and lives where we need to discover healing and hope. And it comes with a joy that we're not expecting. So joy is the beginning, the start, the path out of the woods and onto the pathway of our journey. An important foundation then to give us direction and focus, not some add-on to our living. Hidden joy, surprising joy, we discover it. We recognize it as life-giving, but we need to do more. We need to allow it to embrace us and teach us. The poet E.E. E. Cummings wrote, I would rather learn from one bird how to sing than teach 10,000 stars how not to shine. To pick up joy is to set down sadness, that burden that makes us want to teach stars how not to sing. We can't do it alone. We can't discover joy on our own, but we can allow ourselves to be open to it. When was the last time you allowed yourself to be creative, to nurture that part of your soul that wants to sing or dance or paint, or to look at a beautiful sunset or a garden and thank God in your heart for that beauty. Let it out, that creative side, and leave space for the spirit to fill your soul with gratitude. E. Cummings writes this, I thank you, God, for a most this amazing day for the leaping greenly spirits of trees and a blue true dream of sky and for everything which is natural which is infinite which is yes i who have died am alive again today and this is the sun's birthday this is the birthday of life and love and wings and of the gay great happening illimitably earth how should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any, lifted from the no of all nothing, human merely being, doubt, unimaginable you. Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are opened. Quite the poem to make you think. Roman Catholic Archbishop Dom Helder Camera wrote of poets and artists, as those who have a special place in the heart of God for their willingness to be open and creative. He wrote, hope without risk is not hope, which is believing in risky loving, trusting others in the dark, the blind leap, letting God take over. So let us let God take over and lead us through these summer days and the COVID pandemic and into the places where we can still discover with joy the hidden treasures, the growing kingdom, and the yeastly abundance of food for our souls and for our world. Amen.
Sandra, Jana, and Serpa, thank you so much for the special music that you provided for us today. A piece of music, by the way, that was arranged by Sandra Rattan, and we thank them for that. We want to acknowledge the gifts that you give to the church, the way in which you support our ministry day to day, and especially the support that has come in for our live streaming project. So let us pray. We give these gifts freely. We receive them gratefully. We dedicate them to the work of our congregation, serving human wholeness, caring for our planet, working for justice, welcoming the stranger, and loving one another. Amen. In the congregational letter this week, we acknowledge that starting next week as I start my holidays, we're going to be moving to live streaming our worship service. That means that you can still tune in the same way you always have, but if you tune in at 10.30 on Sunday morning, you'll see the live stream uh, service from the sanctuary. If you miss it, you can still, it'll be recorded. You can still catch the service later in the day. And Jeffrey Dale will be our first guest speaker starting for next Sunday. There have been a number of people who have been involved in doing the taped services that we have been doing to date. And I want to acknowledge all of those who have taken part. We have had Sandra Rattan doing our music and Paul Burke on guitar. And we've had eight other people who've been involved as vocalists with our music. I want to acknowledge and thank them. I also want to acknowledge the behind the scenes team. That's Joe Matthias and Marcus Matthias and also Don Lynn. And there's a message here from Jennifer Cheeseman. She has something to say about our tech team. As we sit on the edge of another new step in worship services at Grace, I wish to give a shout out to our behind the scenes crew who have supported us so well since we've been outside of our church space. What a blessing it was that Joe and Susan's son, Marcus, decided to spend the pandemic in Barrie. Marcus's experience in creating high quality video and audio recordings, editing and software applications allowed us to leap into virtual service recording without missing a beat and to such a high quality, no less. Thank you so much. I have seen spouses of clergy involved in many aspects of church life, but taking on a four month full-time job is above and beyond the ordinary. Joe, your ability and willingness to learn all the software programs and skills needed for editing, syncing, and formatting has been a true gift to our congregation. Please know how grateful we are. You know you have a special talent when, as a senior, you are still leading the way into new technology. Don, a big thank you for bringing Grace into the world of YouTube and making our services accessible to us when we needed to stay connected. On behalf of the worship team and the congregation, 
please accept our sincere thank you for your donations of time, talent, and thoughtfulness. I said earlier that Jeffrey Dale would be our guest speaker uh, for next Sunday. But at the beginning of the service, I mentioned that we would be hearing from him, which we did in scripture, but also about him. And that part I want to share with you now. Three years ago, Jeffrey came to us at Grace United Church working half time as our youth ministries coordinator. The other half of his time working for the presbytery and then for the region doing youth work. Sadly for us, that three year contract has come to an end. And so it's time for Jeffrey to move on. We are happy for him that he's going to be moving into a full-time job for the region, continuing to do youth work and some other program work for many churches. But we're going to be losing him. And as we think about the work that he's done with us, there's some folks that want to share some thoughts about the three years that he's been with us. So we're going to share those thoughts now. We have so much to be thankful for as Grace Church when we think of Jeffrey Dale. So thankful for his creativity. The Christmas dramas that he wrote and directed for our youth were fantastic. So thankful for his wisdom. So wise about people. Wise about faith. I really enjoyed listening to Jeffrey explain questions of faith to both children and adults. And wise about resources. What a wealth of knowledge. Book resources, internet resources, knowledge about people and other groups to connect us with. Jeffrey, all the best and thank you. Hello, my friend. Jeffrey has been an absolute blessing. We love that he lives and practices and models what he preaches. And I hope that he continues to fight the big fight, not just for his communities and churches, but for the whole world. Thanks for being very nice to us at church. You're very noble. Oh, and it's, it's it's not that common to see someone as kind and willing as you. Thank you so much. I'll always remember you. Good luck with your job and goodbye. Hello, everyone. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about Jeffrey. Jeffrey has been an incredible friend to me and a great mentor to the kids for the last few years that he's been here. I grew up in the church, and there's been a lot of youth leaders that have come and gone. But you, I think, have been the most impactful with the kids that I've ever seen. And I wish that there was someone like you when, when I was younger. You genuinely care for the kids. You have the biggest heart I know. And I'm going to be very sad to see you go. However, we'll definitely still get together. This is absolutely not goodbye. Thank you so much for everything and good luck with everything you do. I'm blessed to have worked with Jeffrey over the last three years. He has a real empathy for youth, and they sense this compassion and respond really well to him. I also love his passion for live theater and his strong sense of the value of the arts to our spiritual life. It translates into a really engaging liturgical style with which he has entertained and educated us. He's super easy to work with and can produce a report for any event in the blink of an eye, it appears. Thanks, Jeffrey. Hi, Jeffrey. Thank you for your leadership with Grace's Youth. Your presence, thoughtfulness, and ability to reach individuals is most appreciated. It will be a hard act to follow. It's been a pleasure working with you, and I send you best wishes. Next coffee's on me. Good luck. Hey, Jeffrey. It's hard to believe that your time with us is quickly drawing to a close. You've become a very valued member of our church community. You've gained our everlasting respect and appreciation for your ethics, tenacity, and hard work. You stand your ground on matters of principle, and you have guided us and Barry at large in your many efforts to help the Barry LGBTQ community. We all thank you for this. You've been a great leader for our youth in the programs that you prepared for them, which has allowed them to grow in knowledge, but also in self-respect. I've appreciated your sermons so much, and luckily we have two more to go in August. I'd always felt that no one could match Susan in her knowledge of the functioning of the United Church. But when we got confused on some of its bureaucratic rules, procedures, or specific regulations, you always seem to guide us to the correct answer. We will miss your friendship and wisdom and wish you well in your studies at Emmanuel 
and hope that you will find time to drop in occasionally as you make your rounds throughout the Shining Waters region as Youth Director for the United Church. Thank you, Jeffrey, for working so collegially with Susan for the past three years. And thank you also for your many contributions for gra to Grace Beyond Youth Ministry. We have benefited so much from your spirituality, your creativity, and your theatrical gifts. We have enjoyed your skits, your children's stories, your spiritual reflections, your musings on the United Church, and your rainbow outreach. You are one of us. You always shall be, and we will miss you until we meet again. Hi, Jeffrey. I just wanted to say the world's a better place with you in it, and God bless. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for everything that you do to us. Do for us. <laughs> Jeffrey, it was an honor to have had you as our youth minister, and a blessing to have you as a friend. You treated the youth with an amount of respect and empathy that is rarely come by. You weren't afraid to tackle heavy subjects and to engage with us in even conversation. You treated us like actual people, like equals. I couldn't appreciate that more. Thank you, Jeffrey. I wish nothing but the best for you, and I hope you come by good tidings soon. And now it's my turn. Jeffrey, on this Sunday when we are acknowledging joy in our lives, I want to acknowledge the joy that you have been to our congregation for the last three years. You have been a gift to us, and I want to thank you for being a friend and a colleague in ministry. You brought with you creative energy and humor, a healthy, questioning mind. You reached out to people both in the community and in our youth and in our congregation. We asked you to experiment. We asked you to try new things. We asked you to learn from mistakes and to discover new ways in which we could be in ministry together with our congregation and with the community. And you embraced that. And we thank you. You helped us to grow in that process. We know that you are going to continue in your growing as you uh, continue with your studies and as you take on new duties at the regional level of the church. May you continue to take risks and learn more and to be a gift to the larger United Church. We will miss your smiling face, at times your caustic wit, and also your deep sense of justice. We wish you well, Jeffrey. Thank you for being with us. Let us pray. God of creation and renewal, you who shower your creation with blessings that flow, hear the prayers of a grateful people, a people who do not take your gifts for granted, gifts of love and life within family and among friends, gifts in the whole creation and in this gathering, Gifts we celebrate in ways we can put into words and in ways that go beyond all words, but not beyond our silent praise. God of transformation, you who wrestle your people into new life, turn our lives around, turn our churches around, turn your world around. Keep your reign coming in surprising acts of foolish kindness and amazing moments of daring grace. For we offer our lives to the one in whom your new creation has already begun. Amen. Let us go into the world transformed by God's blessings. Let us go as ambassadors of God's love. Let us go to be salt and light, mustard seeds and yeast in God's world, to enliven God's world and bless neighbor and stranger. Go in peace. Amen. And now let us join together in singing our closing hymn, One More Step Along the Way I Go.